as you could have seen on the screen, we have a new logo, we have a new look, but it's the same exact show. Just a little bit later tonight, we'll get into that in a couple minutes. This is another episode of the Let's Debate podcast powered by Delahanty Media. I'm your co-host, Nick Delahanty. Kyle, listen... I put you through the rigor today trying to figure out what time we were going to go on. I appreciate your uh, cooperation. I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to push the show back. I had graduation today for my high school students. Congrats to the class of 2020. Uh, But I'm glad we were able to get on the air tonight. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Don't have to apologize for that. you got to take care of business. Business. And uh, congratulations to all those graduates as well. It's a big moment, big accomplishment for you. And, um, you know, welcome back to the Let's Debate podcast. You have a chance to check out our previous episode. Uh, Nick and I discussed the NBA returning to play, which I know I'm excited about. Nick's excited about. I'm sure most of you guys are excited about. It's coming up soon, just a few weeks away. So if you haven't gotten a chance to check that out, you can head over to our website, which is on the page. While doing that, you can head over to our social media, Facebook, Instagram, follow, share our content. We always appreciate that. Uh, make sure to comment throughout the show if you're tuning in right now. We, we'd love to see what you guys, guys have to say. We love responding to you guys and engaging conversation and interacting with you guys. And uh, last but not least, head over to the shop. You might actually like something. Um, we got a lot of good stuff in there. I've been taking a look myself. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to hand it back over to Nick. And for those of you looking for the show, I actually went live on my own Facebook page tonight. So... Uh, if you're kind of misdirected, we'll put the show on the Let's Debate uh, site tomorrow. Uh, it's been a long day, as you could probably already tell. But we're still live. We're there. The show is there. The show is active. It's just at a different spot tonight. <laughs> it's, I don't think I need to say it. It's been a long day. But <laughs> while we're talking about futures, and we mentioned the class of 2020, somebody that has a lot of bright future ahead is Patrick Mahomes. And that's the guy we're going to talk about tonight. Lands a record-setting contract extension. 10 years. It can get up to $503 million. But there are a couple of things you need to know. Number one, there's it's not $503 million guaranteed. There's a lot of stipulations in this contract. There's a lot of things that go into it. And number two, he does have opt-outs. So if you ordered your Patrick Mahomes jersey thinking he's going to be there for 12 years... Not necessarily the case. Pump the brakes there. But we're going to break it all down for you. We're going to look at the contract as a whole. We're going to look at how it impacts other quarterbacks on the market. And maybe we'll even get into some Jet talk and talk about how this contract might impact what the Jets do with a certain safety that they're not willing to pay. Yep, uh, Patrick Mahomes. I feel like he's been the talk of the town in football for, for what? It's going on almost, what, two and a half, three years now? If you're unfamiliar familiar with Patrick Mahomes or you have at least heard him if you tuned into the Super Bowl which you know a lot of people do even if you're not a football fan. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was drafted 10th overall in the 2017 draft by the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, Didn't really play much his first year. Started one game had had a a nice win there against the Denver Broncos Uh, and then 2018 kind of took over. Shocked. I feel like he shocked like he shocked the football world. We we all knew he had uh, potential and and but that quickly, I don't think anyone expected that. Uh, he threw for over 5,000 yards, 50 touchdown passes, took home the MVP. And then just this past year, he led the Kansas City Chiefs to a Super Bowl victory for the first time in well over 50 years, I believe it was, 58, 59 years. I don't know the exact number. It's just about as long as the Jets have waited. So, <laughs> um, But we don't have Patrick Mahomes, so I'm not sure if that's going to be anytime soon. But... You know, Patrick Mahomes, um, it's a big contract. And like Nick said, um, you know, on paper, it looks bigger than what it actually is. Um, but, yeah, we're going to dive back in, uh, dive into that tonight. And the, the thing that – and you brought this up, so i got to give you credit for it. I didn't know how much money was guaranteed uh, on that. So the 100 – I believe you said $141 million. Yeah, I believe it's 100 the actual money that's guaranteed there, which is the most guaranteed money in all history. That is a big, big payday there. But there's so many stipulations to it. When when Adam Schefter reported it and you heard everybody, you would think that this was like, oh, man, he's going to be there for 12 set years. 
But it's not really the case. And, and during the show, we're going to break down how it ma- measures up against other quarterbacks and, and different players in the league. So I'm going to actually jump right into that. And I'll pull it up on our screen right here for you. Now, as you can see on the graphic, Mahomes has the, the best average per year at $45 million per year. If you're looking at the contract, he's followed by Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers, Jared Goff, and Kirk Cousins. Now, let's put everything on the table here, Kyle. Mahomes coming off the Super Bowl victory, uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You can make the case that right now at 24 years old, he's the best in the league. Do you think that this is smart for KC to lock him up, or do you think they jumped the gun a little bit? Well, there's, uh, I think hands down, he's the best quarterback in the league. If I guess my question for you, you before I answer your question would be right now and say if I asked you right now who should be the highest paid quarterback in the league who are you going to say without a doubt Mahomes I would have to uh go with him I I just think that Mahomes is tier one and then everybody else is tier two and you can say what you want about Brady but he's older Aaron Rodgers is older I don't see another quarterback that I would really want to match up with him in a in a one game winner-take-all type of feel, I think he's the best overall. I don't know if you might not agree with that, but I want to hear what you have to say about that, too. I agree with that 100%, and I think most people should. I mean, if you're going to be completely honest with yourself and not be biased towards a quarterback on your team or anything like that, Pat is the most deserving quarterback of this contract. Uh, and it's it's honestly crazy to say $503 million is a, a massive number. But when I think it, when you think of the annual salary, at $45 million. I feel like, and it's crazy to say this because he should be the highest paid quarterback, but and, and no one deserves to make more money. But at some point in a near, the near future, just the way the market is going to pass that up. And, and that's where I think my problem is with it because he's going to be making around $45 million every year for the next 10 to 12 years, I believe it is. And he's going to be the best quarterback in the league and that money is going to be nothing eventually. And it's crazy to say that, but that's just how the numbers go up. Every this goes for everything. It goes for wide receivers, running backs every year. There's, they want more money and the, the next big free agent gets the most money. So that's, uh, we'll get into that later, but that's my biggest problem with the contract is five years down the line, 45 million is not going to look like that much that contract for at least some amount of time. Um, but he, Hands down, in my opinion, should be the highest paid quarterback. I, I'm i not necessarily sure if it was smart on Kansas City. I, listen, I'm not in their front office. I don't know what they what their plan is here. It's only going to pay off if they're able to still build around him. And this isn't going to affect them long term with money building around him because he's great. He's a great player. You still need a defense. You still need people to protect him on the line. You still need weapons, even though he's the type of guy I think you could throw me out there and he's going to throw 33 <laughs> touchdowns. So, But now, out of those 33 touchdowns, how many do you have? Listen, I don't, I'll don't. i have one touch fine. If Patrick Mahomes is throwing me the ball, I don't care. <laughs> Listen, you could pull a, a Garfield's own wing Corbett and have 11 or 12 touchdowns here. Like You could be the next big thing. KC, call this guy up. Hey, you never know if, if people if COVID's knocking people out here, they might have to start pulling people from the stands. Listen, you're you're <laughs> somewhat healthy. You're getting there with the shoulder. You, by by the time the season starts, oh, he's not there, right? you'll be ready to go. Yeah. Just wear extra padding for the first couple of weeks. You'll be good to go. I'll, I'll be all right. <laughs> of course, KC, keep it in mind. We'll call Andy Reid after the show's over. But like you said, you have to build a team around them. So how is this going to impact KC overall? Are they going to be able to pay guys? to surround Mahomes. Like, obviously, if Mahomes scores 70 points in a game and the defense lets him 71, you lose the game. I know those are over dramatic numbers, but again, I don't know. Those those kind of contracts scare me. And what I'm going to pull up for you now is the biggest contracts in NFL history. And this is with Mahomes, obviously. And on the graphic, Kyle actually uh, located this graphic for us. So he knows very well how this ranks. Mahomes is number one. And then you have Matt Ryan, Khalil Mack, Russell Wilson, and Andrew Luck as the top four. Now, 
take Wilson out of the equation because obviously he's a different breed. He's Russell Wilson. But what have the other three done? Like, is Khalil Mack worth $141 million as a defensive end? I mean, you know, Khalil Mack is a great talent. And like I said, with the way the market is, it's the next guy up gets the most money. But the graphic is kind of crazy because it's literally one else is just they're like should be on the next page if you really think about it um but it is actually a topic i want to get into later because that's a situation since it is a business it's a situation that's like organizations run into where you have your guy and you have to make that decision do we pay him like do we really think he's worth this money and even if we don't we kind of have to pay him scratch again it's either you get rid of the guy or you pay the guy so it's a situation, especially at quarterback teams run into. Um, and Russell Wilson, you know, another guy. When you look at the contract on the graphic, it looks like he's – and I mean, he is um, ways away from Patrick Mahomes. But annual salary, he's not that far from Patrick Mahomes by any means, and that's because he had a shorter contract. Now, before I jump into either one of those guys, because I have points on both, Do you consider Matt Ryan or Russell Wilson a top five quarterback? And if not, where do you rank them? I know I'm throwing you on the spot here, but. Oh, no, no. Russell Wilson is definitely in my, in my top five. No, no doubt about it. I'm going to be completely honest. He's have Mahomes one and, and Russell Wilson two. It's, I don't even, you could put me on the spot there. I bet I've loved Russell Wilson for years now. He's, he's unbelievable. He does it all. He's smart. Um, humble. He's a winner. And yeah, no doubt he's my number two. And Matt Ryan, listen, Matt Ryan's a good quarterback. He's, he's, you know, you're not a quarterback of a franchise that long and, and to have started all those games if you're not good. So we know Matt Ryan is talented, but, and not just because of his age, but he, I don't think he's in the same conversation as Patrick Mahomes or Russell Wilson. What do you think? I just want to know, did did you talk to my sister before this show tonight? And did she blackmail you to talk nice about Matt Ryan? If so, uh, <laughs> it's okay. You could like give me a wink so I know. So you don't have to like get thrown under the bus here. No, no coming. Um, I, I think Jess might appreciate me talking nicely about him. But I, listen, I won't trash Matt Ryan. I have no problem with him. But when it comes to Duke players, she knows. She she knows that their <laughs> kind words might not come out of my mouth. But with Matt Ryan and the Falcons, we're on good. <laughs> I I have to agree with you on the whole Russell Wilson thing. I think he's number two. Uh, it's tier one, like I said, with Mahomes, and then tier two. Wilson's the top of that one. He's won. He not Super Bowl, but he's won. He's gotten there. Um, he he's a humble guy, like you said, very talented, very smart. I like him. I like everything about him. I like everything about that Seahawks org- organization. Even though I don't like Pete Carroll uh, as a Longhorn football fan, them playing USC, I just never liked Pete Carroll. But yeah. Matt Ryan, I feel Atlanta has done a great job in surrounding him with talent on the offensive side of the ball. If you look at their kind of setup right now, their whole entire offense is is either a former first round pick or a former first round pick that they signed. Like they right. they find ways to surround them with talent. You know, Devontae Freeman uh, leaves, they get Todd Gurley. They upgrade. The only problem with Atlanta is they've put so much assets into the offense and not as much into the defense, and that's what has really hurt them. And I feel like that's the main reason why they're kind of in the middle of the pack where they could be kind of a top tier team with the talent they have on offense because let's look at it when he came into the league you had roddy white and julio jones now you have ridley jones you name it they got him so i i just can't figure out why this team is not as good as they should be matt ryan's a capable quarterback we all know that he had a bad second half of the super bowl but you know it is what it is it just it mind boggles me they're not better than they are and it's basically because of the defensive side of the ball yeah, no doubt. And, and if we're talking the contracts and everything, there's no doubt Ryan deserved the contract that he got. You know, like I said, he was there for so long. He's always played well. Every once in a while, they'll kind of have a down year, but he does fine in those years. And 
he's had a few years. They've had such, you know, good offensive talent on some of those offenses that you, you and how didn't you win a Super Bowl or how didn't you get to the Super Bowl? And I, I truly believe their shot was in, in 2016 um, or the 2017 Super Bowl, but the 2016 season, that was their shot. And unfortunately, they they blew that Super Bowl lead. Um, but they have a very talented offense this year. So I think they do they do a, a nice job. Atlanta does a nice job to prolong his career so that they don't have to come into question or they at least have a good excuse to maybe walk away from him one day and say, listen, you're getting up there, you're not producing, and we're giving you talent. That's that's the best way to evaluate a quarterback, I feel like. If you don't surround him with talent, is it really a fair a fair evaluation? of? The, so I think Atlanta's always done a nice job uh, since they've had him in 08. And Atlanta's really done a nice job always. They, I feel like they always had pretty solid offenses with Vic before the, the Ryan era started as well. Now, I'm going to throw you on the spot. Again, while we're on the Matt Ryan topic. If yeah. if Matt Ryan retired today, without looking at the numbers, because obviously they're not in front of us, based off the eye test, is he a Hall of Famer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I should have saw this question coming. These are the toughest ones. Um, a deeper look at his numbers. I feel like he's definitely in consideration. I think if he would have won that Super Bowl a few years ago, I'd say definitely because he does have an MVP. I don't think he's first ballot, but he has a chance of getting in later down the road. We got to see. He, we don't know what he still has left in the tank. He could have some few a few impressive years that, that could go, you know, could be strongly considered down the road. You know, you you get deeper into your thirties, you're still playing at a high level. You never know. I mean, look, it took away till the time he was about to retire to win Super Bowls. You, you really never know. Since this year, if the defense could hold it together, I doubt they'll win a Super Bowl, but he's still got a, a little bit left in the tank. So what do you think? I think his biggest problem in this whole kind of debacle is that his entire career was behind the shadows of Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. You know, that's who everybody talked about. Uh, I do think Hall of Famer eventually, not first ballot, obviously. I don't think he'll get in unless the draft class is weak. But I think Hall of Famer, and I'm not trying to get brownie points because I live with a Falcons fan who is a diehard Matt Ryan fan, but I do think that based off the eye test and what I've watched, the guy's a Hall of Famer. He makes everybody around them better. You know, you could say what you want. Julio Jones is a once-in-a-generation type talent, but did you ever hear of Roddy White before they got Matt Ryan? Did you ever hear of guys like... Uh, Calvin Ridley, like when he came into the league, people thought he was going to be a number three. He's a capable two. So I do think that he makes the talent better around him. And, and that's what I look for in a quarterback, a guy who's able to not only lead a team, but make everybody around them better. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think one of the topics I wanted to, to bring up tonight is when you take a look at um, um, the highest annual salaries in the league right now, were there any names on there that you just don't think should be on there? Because we, we both know, we both agreed that Patrick Mahomes is deserving of being uh, being number one in that list. But, but um, I kind of wanted to segue into this because of the topic I mentioned before about how it's a business and how some, uh, you know, some teams have to make decisions to pay guys a little bit more than they really want to. Just a clip. Do you remember some of the Just names? to clarify, you're uh, talking about the quarterback list? Just the quarterback list, The quarterback list, right? list yeah. Okay, so I'll read it off because I actually put it back on the screen for us. So Okay, cool. <laughs> so you got Mahomes number one. He's deserving. We're bo- well, how about this? Absolutely. We'll go by each guy, and we'll say if they're deserving or not. We'll give our opinion. Okay. So Mahomes at one, I think we both agree he's good to, that he's worth it? Yep, yeah, absolutely. All right. Then you got Wilson at two. We both showed how much we love Russell Wilson tonight. Yep. Ben Roethlisberger at thirty-four million dollars a year right now. So, I mean, listen, Ben Roethlisberger is not any third best quarterback in the league, um, but I think just what he's done in his career—that's kind of Steelers' way of, you know, showing him some respect, and that's why he has the contract that he does. But if you're trying to surround him with pieces and you're trying to use that money in a more valuable way, you're not doing that by paying him $30. So I don't agree with that contract. 
I think longevity wise and based on what he's what he's done, I I understand it, but he should not be the third highest paid quarterback in the league. Uh, yeah, I totally and undoubtedly agree with you that there about Roethlisberger. That's based off what he did in the past. That's not what he is now. Exactly. It's uh, you know, this is what you did for us. We're gonna repay. We're gonna pay you high. So. Is he the third best quarterback in the league? No. Does he deserve that right now? No. Do I understand why they gave it to him? Absolutely. There's a whole difference yeah. in the spectrum for this one. Number four is Aaron Rodgers, thirty-three and a half million. What's your take on Rodgers? You can make a case. For that. You can make a case for that. I mean, Rodgers. I know he's getting up there, but he he's still, I would say, top five in the league, like just based on production. I know he didn't really have a spectacular. Let's be real. You you have a shot to win every single year with Aaron Rodgers. It's just, he just he really hasn't been working with much either on the offensive side of the ball. I know Jones is a good running back, running the ball, uh, and, and they have Devontae Adams, who's one of the better receivers. But the past few years, they haven't really gotten help, even in this draft. So I think he's deserving of that money. What do you think? I think so, too. I think in terms of longevity, in terms of what he's done, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, definitely deserving. The I, I You know, I'll... I give the the Packers a lot of blame. You're in the first round. Do you have a chance to take one of those receivers on the board and you take a quarterback? I know you're looking toward the future, but help the guy you got now. Yeah, exactly. My dog's running in here right now. <laughs> she, hey, does, um, does the dog he want to hear us on the show? <laughs> he might. Yes, me later. You'll see. <laughs> if he attacks you, we'll put him on. But then after Rodgers, you got Jared Goff, who's at 33 and a half. And Kirk Cousins at 33. Now, I could go on a rant about Kirk Cousins. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing with Goff is he kind of falls into that discussion of what I was going to hold on him. I will say that, you know what, I'll just hold on him completely. But for Kirk Cousins, it, that's just a, a good topic to talk about in general as Jets fans. So happy. You know, Looking back on that, I was kind of like this. I was like, you know, I kind of want Kirk Cousins – I'm happy we went with the Darnold route because Cousins is not worth the money that he's getting now, nor worth the money that he'd be getting if he was at the Jets. I don't think he brings a championship to Minnesota, and I don't think his his uh, <laughs> the checks that he's getting. So, uh, what's your take on that? So I'll give a short answer on golf because you want to cover him a little bit later. <laughs> I'm going to say absolutely, positively, no. Uh, Kirk Cousins, no, I agree with you. I think that. For him using the Jets as leverage to get a better contract in Minnesota, I'm glad he's not that good. I don't think he's good enough to be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I don't think he's worth $33 million. And, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, the next two are in the NFC East, which are Carson Wentz and Dak Prescott. So Carson's making 32 and Dak's making a little over 31. He signed like that franchise tag or ten tender, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So my take on Wentz and Dak is fairly new contracts. Uh, I think, what, Wentz signed that like a year and a half ago maybe? I'm not entirely sure on that, but I feel like it was now. And then Dak just signed that tag. I, I believe it was a franchise tag. Or a tender. I don't remember what it was. But, um, you know what? They, they kind of fall into the discussion, too. But my thing with, with both, I honestly like both of them. And I don't have a problem with either one of them getting paid. Now, do I think, I know Dak's not making this right now, but him, him looking for, do I think he's going to get that? I, I think it's possible. Because, like I said, that's just how the market is right now. Do I think he's worth it? Absolutely not. It's crazy for him to be making 30, 31 and a half million a year either. I mean, um, yeah, so. But they're young and talented, so it just it is what it is. What do you think? Now, as I'm looking lower on the list, because obviously I have it in front of me, um, I'm looking at some of the, the deals like Ryan Tannehill, who's getting 29 and a half million a year. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, twenty-seven and a half million. Matt Stafford, twenty-seven million. Derek Carr, twenty-five million. I, the way the market is, and you made a great point about it, the market's dictating the way that these guys are getting paid. Now, I personally think that 
if Wentz wasn't so injury prone, he'd be worth what he's getting. I, I think or, he's talented. Or maybe even more. Or maybe even more because he's that talented. The Eagles showed that they could win the Super Bowl without him. I think that, that's just yeah. how it is. But he's a talented quarterback. I personally think, and I know I'm going to get a lot of slack for it, I think Dak Prescott's one of the top most over, overrated quarterbacks in the league. He, I, I yeah. just do. And you know what? I'll actually pull my face up for this because, uh, you know, they they want to see me when I'm bashing their boy, I guess. But uh, I just don't think that he's worth that money. I, I don't think he's that good. I think he's overrated. I And I, I get where he's coming from the way the market is. And, and if I was a businessman like that, I'd be asking for it too. Mahomes just got over $40 million. I think I'm close, but... What has Dak done in the playoffs? No, I mean, listen, I agree with you. Like, I said I like both of them, but I do understand that if you take Dak Prescott and put him on the New York Jets, you know, there's a, a big reason why he has been successful and he's gotten to where he is is because one of the best offensive line, if not the best offensive line in football for, you know, years now, especially since he's been there. You have Elliott running in the ball they've they've had receivers whether it was it was des bryant and and Witten at tight end but and now amari cooper he's always had you know i think with that being said like i said my problem before is, is that mahomes is making 45 million but the way the market is that could make 40 million and the fact that they're even that close in annual salary is, is like a joke it's a problem like it's always going to go up, and I'm, I, I'm getting closer to explaining my reasoning behind all this. But the last personal, because that's – I honestly laughed at that contract. I mean, come on. You know, if, if anyone on that team should be getting that money, it was Derrick Henry because he, he literally had the guy on his back, and he carried him. So, um, hell getting that money, number one, not worth it. Number two – I would have given him like a one or two year contract to just be like, Hey, here's another prove it deal. Because yes, you played nice down the stretch, but you were, they got to the AFC championship game and he's a big, um, you know, big part of, of the dimension in a few minutes. I think that you and me or you and I, however you want to grammatically put it, could hand the ball off to Derrick Henry and still be as effective. I could throw a four yard pass like Chad Pennington. I could do it. Just put me behind the line, and, and I'm good. Derrick Henry will protect me. I don't understand why they overpaid that guy. I would have thrown more of that money at uh, at Henry, like you said. I I don't see who. First of all, we watched him as a Dolphin. So I think that just kind of yeah. shows us how bad he was. I, I wouldn't – you know, I think Henry got paid too. When you look at the, the running back market, he got his – you know, he, he got – they they broke the bank for him, but – I would have spent that money on maybe the team. Like you lost uh, um, Jack Conklin line to to open up more holes for Henry and maybe protect him. Just throwing, throwing all that money at him just really didn't make sense to me. Um, so you know, I'll kind of bring up what I was talking about before. So the NFL, we all know, is a business, and I I've been saying this to Nick for years. I've been saying it to some of my other friends who might be watching as well. They know I've been saying this for years. The way the NFL is, is when you draft a quarterback, and I want Stafford and Derek Carr as an example, because you mentioned that before, and their their contracts might be like moving down the list, but at the time when they signed those, they were in the top five, top ten of the high quarterbacks in the league. And that's like a joke. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Matt Stafford's a very talented quarterback. Like, I have a lot of respect. He's put up nice statistics his entire career. He has a few play playoff appearances. They're another team that they know how to build the offense, but they've never given that guy a defense. They've never given that guy a great offensive line. One solid season. The reason those guys got their backs is because that organization looked at that situation and said, hey, listen, are these guys good? Absolutely. And then they had talks with them. You know, what are you looking for? What's best for the team? When they came to that decision to pay them, those teams knew that those players weren't worth that. They knew they were not worth that contract. They knew at the time they were not top five or top ten 
quarterbacks, and they shouldn't be. You have to make the decision, okay, do we pay this guy, or do we start from scratch again? Do we go back to being the Detroit Lions and get that number one overall pick again just to draft the next Matthew Stafford, considering we don't know how to build around him? Or are you the uh, – not well, at the time, the Oakland Raiders, now the Las Vegas Raiders. Do you start from scratch again, or do you stick with Carr? It's a decision you have to make. So that's what tends to get what they ask for, and maybe even a little bit more sometimes, because – they're putting it in the organization's hands. Like, like, hey, listen, do you want to maybe contend for a playoff spot or do you want to go draft a quarterback this year who's an unproven 21-year-old and you might be down for the next five years? So that's just a cycle that the NFL goes through and the quarterback is mission on the field. So, I mean, do you have any take on that? I mean, I've been saying that for years. Yeah, you make a lot of good points on that especially given that you're right about the quarterback being the most important part of the team and, and the most important guy on the field. Let's face it, there have been teams that have won Super Bowls with quarterbacks that aren't necessarily good. I could think of Trent Delfer for one. That's just one off the top of my head. No offense to Delfer. You know, you want a Super Bowl, go go get yours, dude, but you you're not that good. And <laughs> and you're you're looking at it in a, in a grand scheme of things. And you're like, Derek Carr is terrible. And that guy's making $130 yeah. million. Dollars. But it's the way the market is. And like you said, it, it's a decision that these owners have to make. Do you pay the guy or do you restart? And a lot of teams don't want to restart because you're going from, from point one. It's really pushing you back. It could push you back three or four years. And there's a lot that go Absolutely. into it. And I think personally, and, and tell me if I'm crazy, if I was a GM, especially with the quarterbacks, I would have incentive-based um, guidelines that I would offer contracts based off of. So, if you say you're a rookie uh, contract, right? If you're in the top ten in, in passing yards, you get a certain amount of money. If you make X amount of playoff appearances, more money, and it goes that way. And that's what I would offer. And if that quarterback says, you know, I don't think that's a good enough deal, I'm probably telling him to leave because. Look at a car. They traded Khalil Mack to keep Derek Carr. <laughs> I understand what you're saying because it's it's more of listen. Like it, I understand from the player's perspective, get your money w- when you can. Um, but what you're, I feel like what you're trying to say is, as much as you're signing them to a contract, you give, it could be a nice contract. The incentives are more like, hey, if you want a little bit more of that money, go and prove it. Prove you're worth it. Show your worth. Um, and that's smart. And I'm sure some contracts are like that, but for the most part, they're not. Uh, I think with Derek Carr, Raiders, and I could have told you this five, five years ago, the Raiders were going to regret that. Um, I don't think the Lions regret that. I, I think Stafford's done a stand. Like I, like I said, the team as a whole is not that good. But I I was talking with these two. I wanted to mention these two before. Jared Goff, he's – I blessed that they had no choice. They had no choice but to give him that money. Um, you just drafted him at the time. He was having a nice career. Two out of two out of his three years at that point, or maybe three out of the four, were were solid years. And he got and was in the running for an MVP. But Tannehill's a joke. They're gonna regret that. They are no doubt. They're gonna regret that. He's just and he may win you a few games, but he's just not worth it. What he provides for that team, money. That's the point. I'm not gonna say he's gonna. I'm not saying he's gonna do bad. You could have invested that money in other positions and still got the same value out of a player for, you know, ten million to fifteen million dollars less. Seriously, um, but jumping into that, guys like Goff, guys like Mahomes, and now Watson wants money. Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. You look at the past few drafts, uh, 2017, 2018, There was a number of quarterbacks taken, and if you think about players who might be worth that money or they start deciding whether these players are worth that money. You have guys like Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Do you think any players considering Mahomes was drafted in 2017? So those contracts are kind of coming to a close now, the decision to extend these guys. Do you think any of the guys I just named um, are going to get maybe in a year or two from now, might that range of the annual salaries that we've been talking about it's funny you mentioned that because i was just about to go through a list of guys that i i have 
and I was going to ask you oh, how okay. much money you think they deserve annually based off what they've done All now. Right, so let's, let's do that. So then. let's start with Watson. I think this one, I think that this guy is interesting in terms of what he brings to the table, but how much money annually would you be comfortable giving Watson? Well, based on the way the market is going, it's tough because I, I think Russell Wilson is better than, right? And Russell Wilson makes thirty five a year. The thing is, the way the market is, Deshaun Watson's gonna want more than that. So in that case, I'll give him thirty six, just because he's gonna want an extra million. <laughs> what do you think? I think he's better. I think he goes for forty. No, definitely, he'll, he'll definitely yeah. get forty. I think. Yeah. But I wouldn't offer him more than thirty. Uh, personally, I don't think he, I, he's better than Tannehill, but I don't think he's better than some of the guys we talked about before. Uh, I don't think he's better than Wentz. Yeah, I think he's better than Goff, but I don't think he's better than Wentz when he's healthy. Like you said, uh, Wilson, I think he's not better than. So I would go thirty. He'll get over forty because of how the market is. But if yeah. he asked me for more than thirty, I think I would just tell him, you know, bye, see you later. All right. So you want. To go so we want to go about this saying what we would give them yeah well what we would give them okay. if we were the gm i'm telling watson bro win me some playoff games first then come in here and talk about your big payday yeah and before we jump back into what we were talking about i think it was kind of dumb for him to come out so soon right after mahomes signed that extension and say he wants money because you're not even in the same conversation i love deshaun watson i think he's going to be a superstar but you're not in the same conversation as Patrick Mahomes and as a contract nowadays, they become the highest paid player at their position. You're not going to be the highest paid player in your position. So just hold tight. Um, even after that, you pay more than Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> oh, I agree a hundred percent on that. Let's jump into, let's go Baker Mayfield. Okay. How much money would you give that guy? Oh man, that's tough. He hasn't proven anything to me. Nothing. Um, this is unrealistic, but I'd give him like one, because I know, I know. Obviously, sitting here right now for us, a lot of money. But on that chart of the quarterbacks, it's really not. So I'll give him twenty-one, just because to me, you extend him because of what he might be. But I'm not going to sit here and break. It, it, it's an interesting case because Ryan Tannehill got twenty nine million, and do you think he's better than Ryan Tannehill? Yes. So I'm going to go twenty nine and a dollar more than Ryan Tannehill's making. Okay. I think that's a safe bet. I mean, listen, he, he hasn't done more than Ryan Tannehill, but I just feel that. The... I agree, hundred percent on that. Yeah. I agree with that, uh, but he's definitely a guy that. I, I would give him a dollar more. And unless he comes out this year and wins some playoff games, then we could kind of, maybe with the new offense, he'll kind of realize he has two Pro Bowl receivers and, and a Pro Bowl caliber tight end. And actually two now, so. Okay. And what if what if the Browns, you know, replay what they did and, and he has maybe one year left on his contract? What, what are you doing at that point? Would you let him walk at some point? I probably would. Considering the fact that they've been through how many coaches, you you might want to yeah. kind of restart. And, and this guy didn't pan out. If he has another bad year this year, I think that you kind of hold off on it. I don't know if you would try to extend them and see if you could get something on a team-friendly deal. But I think he, I, I you just, have to I get in that final year and make him prove it. Yeah, I just think the pressure's on for him at this point. And I understand it's tough, tough going from coach to coach. It's got to be. Um, and, you know. You know, this is a first-year head coach. He's loaded, man. You at least need to put up the numbers. You know, if you're not going to get the wins, at least put up the numbers and blame it on the defense or something like that. So, um, but yeah, who's who's next on the list? Next is Lamar Jackson, the guy on the matting cover. That's tough. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not a big Lamar Jackson guy. I feel like I might have made that known on previous episodes on here. I know we haven't covered football in almost since the post draft uh, video. I'm almost about that, but um, you know, 
let's be real. Let's say he comes out again this year. That would be his third year really impressing people. He's going to get his money. Yeah, he's going to. I'm just not I'm not taking away anything he's done thus far. He's played unbelievable. But he hasn't won a playoff game. And I want to see in this next year, maybe year and a half, two years, he's able to adjust when teams start picking up on his running and he needs to throw the ball a little bit more. I know he led the league in touchdowns. I believe he led the league in uh, passing touchdowns this past year, or maybe total touchdowns, but I want to see a little bit more. I want to see when the defense starts seeing him a, little bit, him a little bit more, are they able to adjust? I think he needs to protect himself. So I don't know if I'd go so long-term with him, but if I need to go money-wise, I'd go 30 I gave Mayfield 21. I think Jackson's proven more than him, so I'll go an extra 9 mil. I'm going th- – And he's better than Tannehill. <laughs> well, I, I would hope he's better than Tannehill. But yeah. I, I have a couple of takes on Lamar. Number one, I think he's a running back that could throw the ball. Um, he's a Michael Vick build incarnate. The, I think that a lot of people hype him because of the close comparison they see to Vick. Uh, Vic was bigger, Vic was faster, Vic was more explosive. Uh, but people want Lamar Jackson to be Vic. And that's something that is going to carry with him his entire career. Now, as we all know, what happened to Michael Vic? Let's not talk about the dog fighting. Let's talk about the uh, about him getting hurt and not being able to protect himself. So what you say is 100% true. But if I'm looking at the grand scheme of things, I think personally, and this might be a bold take, I think Lamar has the best chance to get 40 plus million on the open market to follow Mahomes. He won't beat Mahomes, but I think that if he has another year or two where he shows what he can do, I think that the the Ravens will back the truck for him. Yeah, no doubt. Honestly, I think out of all the players, all the quarterbacks right now, so I'm saying I agree with it. But if someone's going to top him, it, it's going to be Lamar if he's able to, to prove himself in the next year or so. Because the guy has an MVP under his belt. I feel like he's just done a little bit more. Than, you, I honestly like Deshaun Watson better than him. But he's done a little bit thus far, in my opinion. I mean, he won an MVP. So if he's able to keep it up for another year or two, out of all quarterbacks, I think it's going to be him who passes up Mahomes' annual salary and being, becoming the highest paid quarterback currently in the NFL. Do I agree with it? No, but I think it's the best possibility yet. Makes total sense. And and I didn't give you a number for Lamar. I think he's better than Mayfield. I think he's better than Tannehill. I'd give him 32. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all in that range. Like, Does that put him below Roethlisberger? And do I think he's more valuable to his team than Roethlisberger has? Absolutely. But I said I didn't agree with Roethlisberger's contract either. So... Makes total sense. Now, the last guy is near and dear to our hearts, and that is Sam Darnold. Oh, man. You know what? I'm, I'm going to be real about it. I gave Mayfield 21. I'm giving Darnold 21. I think they're in the same boat. What have you guys done? They've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, do I hope that Darnold turns into something? Absolutely. Do I think he has the potential to? Absolutely. But... This is a big year for him. I don't think having Adam Gase helps him. I don't think they really surround him with much talent. I don't think they protect him on the offensive line. So I'm not saying Sam Darnold isn't worth much to produce for this team because there's no talent around him. Therefore, breaking the bank for the guy. And I'd rather them not commit to a quarterback long term if they're not even willing to break the bank for the best player on the team. So... Um, and we're going to get into Jamal Williams in, in a little bit, but that's the guy I'm referring to. <laughs> now, I, I I might sound like a uh, – and as you all probably know already, we're both diehard Jets fans. So I, we do get passionate about it. There, there are a few things in life that I get passionate about. Yankees, Jets, and North Carolina sports, like – and Texas football, obviously. But the Jets bother me. and And here's why they bother me. Because – No matter how good of a talent you have, no matter how promising that young individual can be, they always find a way to ruin it. And I hate to say it, and I think the damage is already done, but when they brought in the quarterback killer, Adam Gase, 
Jam- uh, Sam Darnold's career was ruined. And having the most important year of his career under Gase is going to be the final dagger of Sam Darnold in New York. Because after this year, if he doesn't perform, what are the New York media going to say? What are the fans going to say? This isn't the guy. And you're going to have a new head coach. I can guarantee it. I'm not, a, I'm not a, somebody who can tell the future. But Adam Gase is getting fired. The guy is not going to be the coach after this year. So yeah. when you bring in a new coach, is he going to want his own quarterback? So that's another thing to look at too. They might say, you know what, Darnold's not worth it. So like you said, this is a big year for him. I just don't see him as a long-term fit uh, to be the Jets quarterback because of Gase. I love Darnold. I wish that he was the guy. I think he's got a lot of promise, but I think Gase ruins him. Yeah, you know, the numbers might not back it up, but I actually kind of liked what Darnold showed his first year. And, and we know Bowles was, had really nothing to do with that. He's a defensive-minded head coach. Um, but the biggest mistake the Jets made was hiring Adam Gase. Biggest mistake they made. I think Jets fans unanimously agree with that and bringing them back this year. <laughs> so, um, yes, they Sam Darnold is um, – I do think Adam Gase is going to be fired this year. I don't – I unless this guy – he will not be back next year. And if he is back, then I don't really know what to say. It wouldn't shock me as a Jets fan for them to make that. This, I do think Sam Darnold's on a short leash here to the organization having to make a decision to extend you or not. I think if Adam Gase goes, I don't, I don't think it matters who the, the next head coach will be. You're going to give Darnold a chance because he is so well respected as a young player, because I think people do see the potential. But once again, the majority can unanimously agree that he's not in a good position. He's not going to be able to showcase himself up the way he should. So, yes, as a Jets fan, would I like to see him show us that he's worth that money? Yes, but I don't have faith in Adam Gase. And it's a weird situation to be in because I, it's like I want Darnold to do well, but at the same time, I don't want the Jets to do well because I want Adam Gase fired. <laughs> so I don't like I don't. It's like I'm kind of playing tug of war pulled on one side i'm being pulled on the other but that that's my take on adam gase and darnold so my number for adam uh adam sam darnold is i would give him 21 just based on what he's done so far and i mean it's hard to extend him if i think gase is going to be there because then it's just a waste yeah that 21 number is logical but as we're uh into the show i want to get into some comments we've gotten throughout um our good friend kurt has been listening he, he said that finally the best player in his sport, Mahomes, is finally paid, which is smart. He agrees with us. Cousins yeah. and Goff are, are bad deals. Uh, and Tannehill, he thinks that he's terrible like us. Um, <laughs> and then he agreed with my point, saying that Dak is overrated. So we got a couple yeah. of uh, bold points from Kurt, who's agreeing with our... Well, uh, actually, I have a question for Kurt. If you, um, what do you think about Drew Locke? Do you think, let's say, two years down the line, Drew Locke is playing the way that he did this year? What what kind of money would you give? Be completely honest about it and uh, let us know. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out for that comment. And then a couple of other comments that, that have come in recently. Um, Jay-Z, Jay-Z on Facebook, he said too much money for the NFL. He said he's done with them in general. 100 bucks a ticket, $50 to park your car. And God forbid you got a beer. Those are his words. So... He is right. The prices are getting a little crazy, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It's a paycheck to go to a game. And and around here, we're not seeing much of the Jets and Giants. So is it worth it? And you're going to need those beers to enjoy yourself. So, <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. And the way that the Jets are, they're not worth to go pay. If you get free no. tickets and you get free parking, cool, go. Enjoy yourself. But if well, you're paying be, anything. It, being a Jets and Giants fan, there's as bad. As it is, there's always good because once December rolls around, the tickets are ten bucks because they're out of the playoffs. They're out of contention. Every ga- every home game, it's it's not it's not horrible. Is it bad? And, and I just want to hear an opinion from a fellow Jets fan. Is it bad? I would rather go watch the Giants because I'd rather watch Saquon. I got something worse for you. I went to the Jets Giants game this past year with one of my friends, uh, Sean, who is a fan. 
and I was rooting for the Giants. <laughs> we were like two and seven at that point, and I was like, just fire Gase. Let's go Giants. I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself. Some of you guys may think I'm a terrible Jets fan. I consider myself a realistic Jets fan in the sense that you know what, two and nine, just tank, just tank. I don't see the point. Point. Um, I wanted them fired when they hired them. So any way to go, I'm all for it. And, and we're both realist Jets fans. We're not like the ones that settle for mediocrity. We want to win. 27 years has yeah. been nuts. Uh, but I do have a couple of Jet comments. We have a fellow Jets fan listening in. Uh, Joseph Patrick goes, if Jamal, who you mentioned earlier, a safety, is the best player on the team, that's not really necessarily a good thing. And and I have to agree with them because you, the way that they undervalue safeties, if you look at some other teams like Atlanta has a receiver as their best player. You know, you can look at Tampa. Tom Brady's your best player. That's your quarterback. Mahomes is your best player. But... A safety? That really shows you what the Jets have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you put it that way, yeah. I, I never really thought about it that way. But what I'll say about Jamal Adams, and, and I mentioned this to Nick uh, once before, problem with the Jets and, and their whole take on Jamal Adams is they're sitting here, at least what I'm hearing a little bit, is that they're making excuses that you can't make Jamal Adams highest paid player on the team and you, and you can't because he's a safety and you can't pay a safety that kind of money. The issue I have with that is you drafted him with the sixth overall pick in the draft. What did you expect him to bring him so that he becomes a superstar? I think he's exceeded expectations. So I feel like you have to pay him, you know, and I just feel if, if they actually end up getting rid of him and refuse to pay him, I'm kind of done with them because that would be the second in the past decade or so. That's the second generational defensive player that they've gotten rid of. And I don't really care what they get for him because you could give me two draft picks. Of course, that's valuable. But Jamal Adams is your, fir- is your first pick. He's everything you want in a first-round draft pick. So, yeah, unfortunately, they would have to overpay for a safety a little bit. But I just can get rid of a guy like him because he's not just a safety, but he's literally the leader of that team. He's the motor, the guy who gets, gets things going. And I think he... He, he's he's plays for the Jets, and he, he's honest enough to call them out and say this culture is garbage. He wants a change. I mean, I'm sure he, he doesn't want to be on the Jets, but he still is he's a great actor, and he acts like he wants to be a part of the Jets. So give him a few extra bucks because of that, too. Now, in terms of everything, in, in the whole Jamal situation, uh, there are both sides to blame here. I think that there are times where Jamal is taking it too out of hand, where he's begging for uh, for his money, and rightly so. I understand the whole situation with his father. If you don't know, his father played for the Giants, was a really good running back, got hurt, really missed out on that payday. And I have to quote a fellow St. Joe's guy, uh, Augie Hoffman. He used to say all the time, and it's stuck, the NFL stands for not for long. So when you have that opportunity to get your money, you got to go get it. Yeah. Uh, so... Personally, I think that Joe Douglas is the reason we're in this situation. And like you said, if you're going to draft a guy with the sixth pick in the draft, you're you're banking on him to be part of your future. So you're sitting there and you're like, and I get the people who say, you know, Douglas didn't draft him. Gase didn't draft him. But the Johnsons were there. The Johnsons signed off on everything. So I don't know what that that correlation is. That doesn't make any sense to me. I think that Douglas ruined the relationship when he started shopping him at the trade deadline. You don't shop your franchise player and not tell him. Like, you hear it in the media. If, personally, I don't know about you, but if I was a a star player and I heard in the media that my team was shopping me and I've done nothing but help this team, I I would be annoyed too. I agree with that. I think a lot of people have gotten a little bit more annoyed with Jamal Adams based on some of the things things he's been putting on social media and I guess what you read in, in news articles. Some of the things he's done are annoying, but I feel like every everything he's pretty much done is justified. If I'm Joe Douglas, I wouldn't have even picked up the phone if someone was looking to get Jamal Adams. I just, like I said before, what are you getting for him? I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I think I just need to pay the guy, get it over with, but 
every day that goes by, and you're seeing these, te- you're seeing up Cam Newton, you're seeing, uh, you know, McCaffrey from that draft class get his money. You're watching Patrick Mahomes from that draft class get his money. Jamal Adams is arguably the best safety in the league, if not his top two with, with Minka Fitzpatrick. Um, he's young. Everything you want, you got to pay the man. Just pay him or get rid of him. But I know Jeff is happy about that. And now let's also take this into consideration. You know, Adams deserves his money. He's the best safety in the league, I think, personally. But yeah, is he to blame for the fact that the Jets can't draft? They they struck out on Leonard Williams, and I love Leonard Williams. I thought he was going to be good. Then you draft Quinn and Williams, another bust. Makai Becton's going to be a bust, I'm sorry to tell you, but he has no chance in New York. Adam Gase is the offense killer. I, I am sorry to tell him, but he doesn't stand the chance. They don't, they don't bank on first-round talent, and that's a big issue too. So if you're looking at it and you, and you hit on some of these draft picks, it makes more sense to pay Adams because you're winning. It's a winning culture. Like People are like, oh, yeah, we're 16-34 and 34 with them. But look at the talent that was around them. You could even make the case that Darnold's going to be a flop. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, oh, yeah, as in what he's shown, but supporting cast, yeah, not putting him in um, a, good, uh, a good position to succeed. Now, it's good that you mentioned Jamal Adams and you know, but what the Jets have done with draft picks around him as well. Because that kind of ties into the Patrick Mahomes situation as well. Because you look at the money they gave him and you, and you wonder, how is that going to affect them long term? Well, the difference between Kansas City, number one, Patrick Mahomes needs to make that money because he's deserving of making money. But number two, Kansas City has done an unbelievable job these from drafting. And, and the list goes on and on. You got Eric Fisher, Chris Jones. I believe they drafted Travis Kelsey. You got Tyreek Hill. They drafted, I believe it was, uh, I believe they drafted Kareem Hunt a few years back. I know the situation that happened with him. I mean, the, the list goes on, and they drafted Patrick Mahomes. So maybe they're confident in themselves where it's like, hey, we need to lock because he deserves it. He's a superhero to them. But they're confident enough their ability to, to, to make the, the correct draft picks that they'll be able to build around next decade. As a Jets fan, and I'm sure within the Jets organization, we have no faith in them doing that. So when you find a gem in the draft like Jamal Adams, we just want him to be paid because it doesn't come around often for the Jets. You know what the thing that that amazes me is, and and this kind of segues to Darnold more than anything. When they got Chad Pennington in the 2000 draft, they drafted guys around him. They drafted Anthony Beck, and then they drafted Santana Moss a year later. So they were trying to make somewhat of an effort to give Pennington probably the worst quarterback they've drafted some people around them. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give Jets fans a stomach ache because I have one right now. When they drafted Sanchez with the fifth overall pick in 2009, if you go by the years afterward, they didn't draft another offensive player in the first round until they took Darnold. And you want to hear some of the names they took, and I know you probably know them, Oh, I know, but you could say them anyway, yeah. I'll give everybody a summary. Kyle Wilson, Muhammad Wilkerson was kind of okay. Quentin Copels, then Big Bad D. Milliner, who they got in the, for Revis because they had to trade away another generational type talent for nothing. Sheldon Richardson, who we met, was a pretty cool dude, but really didn't do much for him. <laughs> Calvin Pryor, Leonard Williams. Darren Lee, and then Jamal Adams. And that led to the Sam Darnold pick. And then since then, Quentin Williams. And then it finally took Makai Becton, an offensive lineman. So look at it. They, the Jets have struggled with the offense for years and years. It just goes – it continues. Um, I think by drafting Sam Darnold, they should have attacked the side of the ball a little bit more, more than, than just signing – Le'Veon Bell, um, which, listen, I love signing him. I think he's a great talent. I think he could fit the, the offense well and about Sam Darnold. I'll take some pressure off of him. But if you, you bring in Adam Gase to be the coach, you don't even have Le'Veon Bell because he doesn't know how to utilize him, utilize him the right way. It's amazing to me. And the, the way that they are, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Now, 
let me pose this final question to you about Adams. Now, if you're the GM, do you have any problem extending him now? I, I know that their big thing was too early in the contract, but now looking at it, McCaffrey got his money. Mahomes got his money. Uh, they're even talking about Miles Garrett getting paid. Do you think that it's time to sign Adams, and do you think he's worth it in the Jets situation? Like, put yourself as the Jets GM here. Well, number one, I think he's worth it. I think he's the better they've had personally since Darrell Revis, in my opinion. Um, I, I think they – if look, if they want to keep him, no choice but to extend him now because the guy's going to sit out. So, you know, make your choice. You're going to trade him, then just trade him. Or let him sit there and let him suffer. I mean, they can make, make that and extend him. Just do it now. You want him to play or you don't. You're, you're already – the, the bridge is literally burning as we speak. If you want to repair it, you better do it now. Um, I don't like how Douglas handled it. I, I don't. I think that when you tell your best player you're, you're going to take care of him after the draft, you at least talk to him about it. I know we had a global pandemic, but you tell him, look, due to the circumstance, let's talk about this and, and let's not make a decision right now. Let's figure this out. Let's get an agreement that works for both sides. But we value you, and we want you around long term. If I'm Douglas, I sign him. I think he's worth it. I think he's great. I love the energy he brings. I think if he stays in New York, he's a Hall of Fame type player, even regardless of what the Jets do. But for his personal sake, I hope he gets out. I hope that they trade him because there's no building in New York. They've shown that they can't figure it out. You you look back, they haven't been competitive since Sanchez days. Like that's that's pretty bad. They they had the one year with Fitzpatrick, but we all knew that was going to be a flop. It was just written in the cards. The cards were there, but it's just you're wasting that a talent that you drafted. And the Jets just have to say, you know, we're rebuilding. Tell, stop lying to the fans. Stop giving everybody this false hope, and just come out and be like, we're rebuilding. We're seeing what we have in Darnold. This is going to be a while, but again, that's not a way to get fans to the seats, so they refrain from doing that. I, I think the last thing I'll say about Adams is I think him being a safety and and, and being such an intense player and, and playing the way that he does, he could be injured at any moment, so him wanting to to get his money, you know, I'm a bit, I also think he fits Greg Williams' defense perfect, and it just would suck to see him go. Uh, but with that being said, jumping back to Patrick Mahomes' contract, do you think that they made the right decision by by giving him the 10-year um, extension? And do you think he actually plays that out? I, I like it personally. I think that you got this stud, and before he could do anything else to kind of make his star even bigger. I think locking him up makes a lot of sense. I think they did it really well. I think they took care of a guy. They showed that, you know, you perform, you will take care of you. Um, in terms of sticking out the contract, I don't know because there are some opt-outs in there that do scare me a little bit if Casey doesn't uh, exercise him. I think that he'll opt out and he'll get a big contract, whether it's with KC or with somebody else. So I'll say that he'll play the majority of the contract out, but I do think there's a chance he'll opt out. We might see a new, newly set contract for him at some point over the next 12 years. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think it would be bad on his part to opt out at some point and kind of, you know, how he continues down, down the road in, in his uh, career. I do think that the guy's a tremendous talent. I think he's worth the money. If I was going to give any won that money it'd be him if I was going to build a franchise right now and I'd pick any player to build it around it's going to be him he's if he continues down this road you can even make the case possibly right now the kid's a first battle of famer it's exciting to watch, watch Super Bowl as, as long as he stays he's healthy they're able to kind of protect him and give him stuff, you know you know talent to throw the ball to but I, I wanted to bring something real quick about Patrick Mahomes that um, I was reading before on uh, CBS Sports, 
And this is by, I'm going to say, Shanna. He wrote this quick thing about the contract to kind of give some people a little bit of a better understanding. Because in other sports, let's say baseball, the guaranteed money is there. And in football, it's not. So the $503 million, it's not what you might think it is. But this is the way that she put it. She said he's got a contract for this year and next year. This year he's around two to three million dollars. The year after he's around twenty five to twenty seven million dollars. Add those two years plus the ten years at forty five million, plus the twenty five million he could get by winning the MVP every single year, getting to the Super Bowl every single year, which by the way, not gonna happen. Then you get to five hundred and three. You put it that way. She kind of explains it a little bit more. Um, obviously, I, I think what she's trying to say is he's not really going to be making much this upcoming season deal. But that's when the contract gets going. And ultimately, altogether, he has $144, $141 million guaranteed. But due to all those incentives, I believe that incentive right there was $25 million if he wins the MVP. I don't know if that's a fact. I mean, she she mentioned it. But if that's true, he's making more. I don't I don't know about, about that. But if he's he makes more in, by, by winning MVP than some of these people do um, during their contracts and annual salaries, so listen, he they set the contract up nicely because number one he'll play out the end of the rookie deal. I think that's vital because it will get to his age twenty six season. He'll enter the new contract at the start of his prime. So there's a lot of incentive there. If there's incentives like that, you rest assured he'll be playing his heart out to win the MVP to win twenty five million a year. Like that's that's insane. Exactly. And you know that it's very possible that is true because I mean Sam, when you look at the the contract, the five hundred and three million dollars, I mean, that money's gotta be going somewhere. It has to there has to be a lot invested into those um those incentives. So it maybe it's gotta be true if she's putting it out. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like that. But now, as we're over an hour already on the podcast, it seems like these shows go way too fast. It's kind of like we're in here and we're having a great old time and they snap. What's your final thoughts for tonight? I enjoy doing the show. I love talking football. And obviously, you and I talk, especially during football season. Um, It's interesting talking about these contracts because – it's kind of fun to predict what might happen. And we've been talking about the Jamal Adams one for a while. Um, so I enjoyed it. You know, I'm talking football. I'm talking football with you. Uh, what do you think about it? Hey, I love talking big money. Uh, I give Patrick Mahomes <laughs> a lot of credit. I, I think that he deserves it. I think he's a great asset for the NFL. I hope that he continues to stay healthy because I love watching him on Sundays. Um, I don't love watching the Jets on Sundays anymore. I, I kind of lost hope but again pay the man that's all i'm gonna say pay the man please make me happy for once don't trade him pay him uh but again uh, we love talking football we're getting closer to the nba and baseball but it's always fun and refreshing to look at at the nfl and kind of change the pace a little bit and as always we appreciate everybody uh listening into our show uh on the screen you'll see our store i forgot to mention this earlier and it kind of slipped my mind. As you saw at the beginning, and I'll pull it up at the end of the show, we have a new logo. All the our new gear, and I didn't even tell Kyle this, so this is new. Uh, all our our new logo is on our gear in our team store, so go check it out. A special promo for tonight only. If you type in the word logo, you'll get a 20% off coupon from Teespring. So I think that's a nice incentive to go and check out the show and check out our store. Uh, But again, follow us on social media at Delahanty Media on Instagram, Let's Debate Pod on Facebook, as you'll find we'll post the show there tomorrow, and on Twitter at Let's Debate Pod. So with that being said, I think that will wrap it up for tonight for us. Anything else, Kyle? I mean, you know, thanks for everyone who's who's tuned in. Thanks for uh, you know commenting and engaging uh, with us, interact, say, and. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And like Nick said, you know, we're getting closer and closer to live sports. So, you know, because we got to find topics to talk about. This is obviously, uh, you know, a relevant topic. And it's it's kind of one of the bigger stories that are going on in sports right now. But 
I'm looking forward to live sports coming back. I think it's going to take the show up a notch for sure because there's going to be something new every day to talk about, and you don't really know what to expect each week. Keep tuning in, and um, we'll see you guys next week.